visual on these flames. They are pretty and blue. That's why we do preventative maintenance is to, to find preventative fixes. This this is a fun one. This is Philip with Yarbrough and Sons. Today we are heading to a customer's house. This is the first time we've been here. It's going to be our first trip of a, main, a yearly maintenance plan. We're going to look at the furnace today. I don't know anything about this system, but the homeowner seems to think that they may have an undersized return just due to hot spots in the house. Based on most of the houses we see in central Oklahoma, I would say their assumption is probably right. So we'll look at that, see if there's potential to to add another return or even if that's the issue at all because we don't want to run on assumptions by any means. We're about to pull up to the homeowner's house here in Norman uh, which is an area we do a lot of work every day. All right well, let's get after it. Just grabbing everything here for a heat tune up. I've got my manometer set. I've got a flashlight. Got all the tools otherwise I need in my bag already. I'll take an initial look. I'm gonna grab my inspection camera as well. That's one thing I forgot. That way we can take a good look at the heat exchanger because we've been told that it is a gas furnace. Crucial part of checking a gas furnace is actually getting visualization on that heat exchanger. Let's go. First things first, the air conditioner is running, so I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this thing to off. Let it cycle down and we'll pull this blower door. We definitely need to let it run long enough to do a proper full diagnosis on the entire heating system. As long as there's no big issues from right out of the gate, you should be able to check everything you need to check while it's running with about 15 minutes of runtime. I'm really gonna put a good eyeball on this blower wheel because dirty blower wheels are something that we see a lot of and they can really restrict your airflow. A decent amount of buildup. This would be one, I might just pull this control board out of the way. It's just a couple of screws. I think I'm gonna have to pull this blower all the way out now just to get us where we need to be. There's a good chunk of metal just wedged in between the heat exchangers right there. That's what was holding us up. Very good. Where that came from, I, I don't exactly know. That does not look like a factory piece of metal. That's a piece of sheet metal that somebody has cut and shaped to size. And that brings a lot of questions. There's been some field modification to this unit. There's an extra bracket screwed in there, it looks like. This this is a fun one. Initial inspection, not, not a single issue that I can see with the mounting of the heat exchanger. No cracks, no, I mean, not even rust uh, worth note at this point. This is a 10-year-old furnace, but at this point, I don't see any reason to suspect any, any issues with that heat exchanger, but final operations check will tell us for sure on that. You can't just rely on visual inspection for really most anything in this trade. Try not to poke myself in the eyeball. We pulled this blower wheel. We didn't really have suspicion of anything being wrong other than the fact that I am going to recommend it being cleaned. But while we've got it out, let's give it a free spin, check it. Not much wobble or play of note. It's not perfectly straight, but I'd give this one a pass other than the dirt content. We're looking in between these fins right here on this side that your, your motor's gonna run in this direction as it's running. It's gonna catch air, or it's gonna catch dirt from the air that way. So what we look for is this build up here. Get this put back into place. We'll get this motor wired back in correctly. Pull out the hot surface igniter, which it's a carbide igniter, so it's something that you gotta be very careful with. Moving on to the flame sensor. A little bit of debris. This thing, I, I would be willing to bet this has been replaced at some point because for a 10 year old flame sensor, that is in very good shape. This is what I like to clean with. This flame sensor is gonna be a flame rectifier. So, as the flames sit on this flame sensor, after a few seconds of this sensor detecting that we have a flame, it's going to send a signal to the board to go ahead and bring on the blower motor so we can continue the sequence of operation for gas heat. I just pulled the screw that's holding the hot surface igniter. you got to be very careful pulling these out because they will shatter very easily. Oh yeah, that's uh, that one's in pretty rough shape. What you see is that, that nice dark color towards the bottom there. That's, that's what you want your entire igniter to look like. That right there tells me that this thing is had flames on it for a lot of years and over time th this is a part that often needs replaced i'd say about every five years I, you're you're going to see most igniters be in rough shape it's not a safety hazard but it is a leave you in the cold hazard a visual inspection on this flue pipe everything seems to be secure at the furnace got a 90 to a six inch slip piece there we have metal fab brand pipe down here you see this tape joint, it's actually going into Duravent, which is a different brand of pipe. 
As far as I can tell, there's no difference in the quality from brand to brand on these two particular brands, but we're not gonna have the proper locking mechanism to go from one brand to the other. We like to take pictures of absolutely everything that we can pertaining to the service call that we're on or the system that we're on. If we were to ever need to track down parts in the future, it is extremely helpful. If we need to call and talk it over with, with somebody in the office, one of the managers, that does help build a lot of trust and that, that helps paint a better picture when we're bringing, bringing things to light for, for the customers. All right, so we did flame sensor igniter. This right here is the induced draft motor and that is actually gonna kick out the flue gas. So as your furnace comes on and ignites, before that even happens, this motor needs to come on and prove to the pressure switch that, there, that the motor itself is spinning as it should and that there's no obstructions in your flue pipe. Right now, this thing seems to be free spinning. That, that's a good sign. And we'll have to tell if it's working oper operating, uh, operating properly check by checking voltage and amperage from the motor. Oh, so far it's going well. We did run into the unexpected issue with the uh, blower motor not wanting to go back into place, which we found that piece of metal had been wedged uh, in between the tubes on the heat exchanger. We'll fire it up, make sure nothing crazy is happening there, no impending issues, and they didn't use that piece of metal for uh, a fix of any kind, because that's not a good fix just to wedge a piece of metal in there. That's why we do preventative maintenance is to, to find preventative fixes. And so far, just, just from the visual inspections and Checking what we've checked with, with no power applied to the unit, I know we, we need to recommend a hot surface igniter replacement, blower motor cleaning, and we need to address the flue pipe, the mismatched brands on the flue pipe there that was just sealed with a piece of silver tape. All right, so upon putting this blower back together, we had previously already pulled out one piece of folded metal, thought we were all clear. Went to test the blower quickly, and I was a little suspicious, so I kept my hand right next to the pigtail to unplug it and sure enough about a second of runtime I hear a big thud tink sound and another piece of metal had fallen out from the heat exchanger so now I really need to dive in deep and figure out why somebody had been wedging these pieces of metal in the heat exchanger. My guess was that at some point there was a rattle from the furnace and a previous technician thought that the heat exchanger tubes were maybe rattling and so they use these to try to wedge in between them just to keep them still. A very risky fix if you're just leaving free floating pieces of metal up in the heat exchanger. So we'll dive in deeper. I'm gonna get my inspection camera at this point. It gives us a good chance to take a snapshot of what we're doing and it saves right to our phone, which we're able to put in the, the picture app that we use to present our pictures to, to all the homeowners and business owners that we service. I'm not seeing any more of these pieces of metal, which I'm grateful for. All right, we just got the blower motor put back in again. Plugged it back in and immediately heard a tink as soon as the blower started running. Found that there was another piece shoved up higher, another piece of sheet metal sitting up higher that fell down as well. So luckily I pulled the blower back out. Didn't cause any damage. I think it hit once and slid on the bottom side of the housing. Now we've got the blower back up and running and no, no more obstructions. 0 0.53, 0 0.52, we're hovering in a pretty healthy now just visual on these flames, they are pretty and blue. Right now, so far I'd give this a passing grade other than the fact that I have not checked my gas pressure. And overall, our, our igniter was very rough looking to the naked eye. It's pull, pulling proper amperage still. I'm still gonna recommend it replaced because I do, I do see a very high chance of that failing this, this winter. I need to get my manometer on there, so we're gonna shut it off. I'm just gonna set it down below set point. There's that rattle sound. If you can hear that, that's probably why we found pieces of metal wedged in between the heat exchanger. If we were to ultimately find out that this furnace is not under warranty, I would recommend getting an estimator out here because we have a lot going on and I'm concerned about the overall safety of this, especially if somebody's just shoved metal in there to, to combat issues. The longer we work on this particular call, I'm starting to wonder what all kind of corners might have been cut and what kind of a quick, quick fixes that weren't the best fixes might have been done. Really like the field piece um, equipment tools. This app makes it to where I can read. Right now all I'm, all I'm focused on is my manometer pressure, but if I were to be, if I needed two manometers, I could check both, both at once. We can check temperature split, which we will check the temperature rise across this in a, at a later time. So at 3.62, I would consider that a forgivable range. And if we stay there, I, I, would, I would say we're fine. All right, let's check out this filter as well. 
Oh man, so it's definitely causing some significant airflow issues. That is awful dirty. Luckily, part of our maintenance plans include a filter each trip. So two times a year we'll take care of the filter for you. We can also provide extra filters at a cheaper cost than most hardware stores can do for you. All right. After we were done, I just went ahead and kicked the air conditioner back on. Just to do a brief check. Wasn't really planning on putting many tools on it. Just make sure everything's operating. Upon first glimpse, this condenser coil is caked solid with cotton wood and dirt and debris. Yeah, if you'll just peek up between these fins here, you can see you're not seeing any fins. All you're seeing is debris. All four sides completely caked up on this. Taking all four sides off, taking this top off, laying it aside, and washing it from the inside out is how we like to do it. As part of our maintenance membership, that, that would be included to get that condenser coil washed out. Heat pumps will also be washed thoroughly during the uh, preventative maintenance check. And since they just signed up, first time customers, we're gonna go ahead and take care of them on this one because if you look at the shape of this coil, it is not getting any air through it. We just, we wanna make sure that they are uh, gonna be able to be comfortable in their own home. Grease deposits and different builds up that require some chemical. This one, as dirty as that is, a high pressure water nozzle. I say high pressure, I mean something like that. You don't want to take a power washer to it by any means. Um, this is all it's going to take to get the trick done on this one. I go at a hard angle left to right. You just pretty well want to stay straight up and down. And I'll repeat, do not take a pressure washer to them. Right here, you get you a high pressure bullseye nozzle. I think these things cost about 15 to 25 bucks depending on where you find them new folks living here we have no no maintenance history on this the customer reported that their home has been been getting up to 78 degrees at some point during the summer and this alone could explain that overall this this first time maintenance went pretty well most time they, they go pretty smooth without hassle you may have a few recommendations here and there but today we found these two pieces of metal that had been wedged up to keep the heat exchanger tubes from flapping, I'm assuming. Or they don't even flap, it's just a light vibration, but you get metal on metal can sound like a real screech to the homeowner. So we pulled those out, we, we let the blower run in full speed. We could hear a little bit of that, but we'll have some recommendations for them. Overall, I feel a lot more comfortable having these out of there and having a little bit of a rattle than having these in there where they could potentially fall down into the blower housing and destroy a fan destroy the blower wheel destroy a fan motor um so yeah that, that's the biggest thing we found today and here we go off to the next call